everyone, I'm Jessica Stutzman and welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. LEAF, the Lake Erie Arboretum at Frontier Park, is Frontier Park's nonprofit partner and a community leader in environmental wellness, offering a safe, creative, outdoor environment for children, families, and all individuals. Joining us today from LEAF is Rosa Fatika Showers, the Director of Programs, and Ken Fromneck, Relief Volunteer. Rosa, thank you so much for joining me here in the studio today. I love talking about trees and tree plantings and your wonderful park. So uh, just to get into it, the last time that we met, LEAF was in the beginning stages of launching its new initiative, Relief. So what has Relief accomplished since the last time we spoke? Yeah. So the last time we spoke, like you said, we were in the beginning stages of our tree planting initiative. And since that time, what we have been able to accomplish, I think has been truly amazing and impactful in our community. Um, to date, we've planted over 4,000 trees wow. throughout Erie County. Yes, That's really impressive. Uh, which is really exciting when you think about the big picture number of 275,000. We have a long way to go, but the fact that we have been able to accomplish that in a COVID year um, is very exciting. Uh, many of those trees we were able to plant um, with the Erie City School District on their school campuses. Um, you may have noticed the pink and white tubes that are all over the properties of the schools. Um, those are actually small trees that we have planted. Um, in addition, we've planted in the county at Wattsburg Elementary School. Um, we have also planted in some riparian zones along Elk Creek with property owners who have allowed us to come onto their properties and help to repair those areas. Um, we have also planted with the Benedictine Sisters at their Glenodo Center. We have planted at the YMCA's Camp Fitch. Um, in addition to that, we have had many Erie County community members receive trees to then plant at their homes. So a lot of planting has been happening this spring and really, um, this has been possible because of a partnership we have with Keystone 10 Million Trees. So this is an organization connected to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and they have been able to provide us with the trees free of cost, um, shelters and staking to be able to plant them all across the county. So. Rosa, if our viewers don't know, and, and I can mention a couple of things that I know about trees because we've done a lot of research and I've done a lot of tree plantings also, but if our viewers don't know, what are the benefits of trees? So <laughs> the benefits of trees are just endless. Um, the first one that comes to mind for me is that they help to clean our air. Mm -hmm. So trees take in carbon dioxide and they let off clean oxygen for us to breathe. In addition, thinking about a city like Erie, um, trees provide shade. So they help to cool our air and provide shade for homes and businesses and schools. Um, another favorite of mine is just the the, um, what they bring to your mental health. Mm -hmm. So if you think about Frontier Park, um, that has been our model for Relief. LEAF as a nonprofit organization has spent the last 20 years making Frontier Park what it is today. And we want to expand that all across the community. And a big part of that, especially during COVID, was a retreat for people to come to and enjoy nature and green spaces and just to help their overall mental and physical well-being. So those are just a few of the yes. ones that come right to mind. And that yeah, and absolutely. And what, what you said about Frontier Park, it is stunning. It Thank is you. absolutely <laughs> beautiful. It is a retreat. Um, you know, viewers, if you have just a few minutes on your lunch break to, you know, grab your packed lunch and go <laughs> eat outside there, um, it is absolutely the most picturesque, um, green space and mm -hmm. it is it's in you know um, in in downtown in, in the city of Erie right. so it is stunning some Thank of my you. favorite benefits for trees um, they I thought it was interesting when we read a few studies 
If you plant trees in a shopping district, they have found studies where shoppers will shop longer and spend more money in a shopping district with trees versus those without trees. Um, I guess somehow it slows down traffic. I think it, it provides a neighborhood feel. <laughs> and also if um, somebody is recovering in a hospital and they have a tree outside their window versus if they don't have a tree outside their window or they have, you know, um, just a concrete view, they recover faster from their hospital stay mm -hmm. if they have a tree outside their window. Right. So, That's yeah, just a couple, yeah. a couple of quick little tidbits I've learned over the years. Yes. Um, but you did mention COVID and mm -hmm. you've been working with community members mm -hmm. in 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. What what has been your experience working with the community during the pandemic? So for us, it has been really just a wonderful shift and allowed us to continue to engage with the community. In the past, um, we had people coming to the LEAF Center for different programs within our building. And because that was not possible during COVID, this has created um, an opportunity for us to connect outside in the beautiful open air with community members um, to whatever their comfort level is. So whether that's wearing a mask, safely distancing themselves, or participating in a very small planting or in the, t um, the care of trees on their own time, it's really been very nice um, and just a perfect way to still engage with the community. Um, I'm very excited because we have over 150 people in our community who have signed up to volunteer with Relief. I would say a great percentage of those people have already been a part of plantings or care. And I just can't stress enough the fact um, that the Erie community has really stepped up in this project, we have some individuals who have started with us at our first um, city, plant, city school planting at Strong Vincent, who have continued to plant with us and are also caring for trees by watering this summer. And it's just been really wonderful to work with those people and get to know them. And they have a lot of passion about the project as well. And how do you think moving into the fall season um, that planting is going to go for you guys? Are you, mm -hmm. are you ramping up, staying status quo? How, what do you guys mm -hmm. see for the future? Right. So for this fall, we have plans to plant about 5,000 trees. Um, so part of what, um, at this time, what sort of dictates how much we plant is what we're able to receive from Keystone 10 million trees. And then we um, are also lucky to have partnered with First, Ener First Energy Corporation, specifically Penelec in the Erie area, who um, will be donating a thousand trees to us to plant. Um, we have plans to plant um, in the housing authority of Erie. We have plans to plant on some vacant lots um, and what that will look like if you've seen the trees that we've planted, they come to us um, as young trees. They're called saplings. So, you know, some people don't even think of them as trees. They're just little babies, but we're going to be planting nursery settings. So that way in a few years, the trees can be moved to become street trees and then create green spaces within those vacant lots. Um, in addition to that, we have a great opportunity with Joanna Connell Elementary, who would like to plant an orchard. So we will be receiving fruit trees from First Energy that we will use to then plant an orchard on Joanna Connell um, with the students, right, engaged with the project. So that's very exciting for us for this fall. That sounds super fun. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned fruit trees. What other species of trees have you guys been planting? Right. So. Um, Last year, we were able to plant a wide variety of trees, um, dogwood, service berry, oak trees, um, river birch, I'm trying to think what else. There's a very long list, but specifically for this fall, um, we are looking at planting trees that will grow to be um, a lot larger. So the larger the tree, the greater the benefits mm -hmm. to to us. So um, in addition to the fruit trees, we'll have apple, peach, cherry. I think we'll have um, 
some pear trees at the orchard. So a wide variety. Um, we're lucky to have a long list of trees to choose from, from Keystone. Um, it just all depends on what's available to us when we order. So. Yes, and so it does sound like, again, you have this approved um, species list. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're all native trees yes. to PA, is that right? Yes. Okay, that's yep. what it sounded like to me. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> We've been through we try it. try to I plant all native trees. Yes, yes, I know exactly what you're going through. Um, and where do you see this project in the next couple of years? So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got the short term. Right. And again, you mentioned that long term goal. Do you think you guys will hit it? <laughs> I hope so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, just thinking about how long it could take, I try not to think about that, um, you know, just small steps at a time. But we are looking at a lot of different grants in the community um, where we could hopefully plant 20,000 trees a year. Um, so we have a lot of, like I said, grant opportunities that we're looking into, possibly building our staff and just building the awareness of trees and that anyone can plant a tree in their backyard and it can be a part of relief and the impact we're making on Erie, Erie's community. Absolutely, so. and we just planted, um, uh, there was a seedling sale, so we grabbed mm -hmm. two plum trees and we planted them in the front yard. Um, it took about five years for them to start producing fruit, mm -hmm. and what I realized um, is that I think the birds are eating all of it before we do, Right. but I think that's also a good thing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Feeding nature, we love bird watching outside the mm -hmm. window, and, yeah. and again, it does provide you know, an, an aesthetic feel right. you know, to the neighborhood, but um, we'll be lucky if we get one or yeah. two plums. I think the animals are gonna get them first. <laughs> I have learned that um, service berry trees, which we had a lot of in the spring, are good to plant around other fruit trees because the birds will go for the service berries instead of the fruit that you want to eat. So maybe we can get you a service that's berry to plant. Say, that's a good tip. I'm gonna, now you're gonna see yeah. service berries popping up right. in my yard. <laughs> um, so how can community members who are watching this show today, how can they get involved? Mm -hmm. How can they help plant? What can they do in their own yard? Right, so um, we do have our website. Um, it's relieferie.org. And through our website, you can go to our Get Involved tab and there's a few different ways to get involved. You can simply get involved by signing up as a volunteer and then that adds you to our list of emails that we send out all volunteer opportunities. Another way you can get involved is like you, we planted two trees in your backyard. You could log those and then we would add them to our count and we also um, utilize, it's called Open Tree Map where we map all of the trees that have been planted. And then that um, information that we input um, puts out the environmental benefits of every tree planted. Mm -hmm. So that's one way to be involved. You can sign up to be a partner or someone who is also looking to plant trees. So one of the things we'll do is um, anyone who wants to plant trees on their own property, um, they can sign up on our website and then we'll let you know when we have trees available. Um, that could be a simple tree giveaway or if you're someone who has acres of land and wants to plant 100 trees, we can help to provide those to you. That's incredible, and I do really want to direct residents to check out this Open Tree Map website. Um, the township used it. We did um, a tree inventory with um, our uh, forester, with our Erie County Forester, mm -hmm. and um, there were a lot of things that we did. Of course, we mapped all the trees in all the parks, but um, and we had lots of volunteers that we could not have done this, you know, without them. Mm -hmm. But they also did an inventory of, you know, the the um, the size of the tree mm -hmm. and the species of the tree mm -hmm. and you know if it was in good in good condition or you know if it was um, you know a tree of concern so mm -hmm. I really want to direct everybody to this open tree map of course add your own trees if you have planted but mm -hmm. it's really eye-opening and then again if you want to touch on this benefits calculator mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting you know because that gives you some concrete evidence of mm -hmm. all your hard work Right. Working, you know, right. working toward the environment or working toward the community benefit. What are some of the things they right. track? Right. So they I, they track um, the stormwater filtered. Mm -hmm. um, they also track money saved on like your air conditioning bill, um, the carbon dioxide. Um, 
you know, it's cool for like someone who might not be as interested in trees or really understand why we are so passionate about planting them because it gives you a concrete, okay, this is the money I'm saving. This is what my tree is actually doing. And for some people, that's what they need to really want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would definitely agree with the money saved on your air conditioner. And I'll just tell a quick little story, but we have three giant trees um, outside of our property and then the two little plums. And, but the three giant trees, they are very mature trees um, and, and they uh, are on the west side of our property. So they shade our house very nicely at just the right time. And I will tell you, we do, we have, you know, air conditioning. Um, this particular summer, and I know it's been a cooler summer, but this particular summer, um, I think we've turned on our air conditioning maybe three days out of That's the entire awesome. summer. You know, when right. we get over 90, <laughs> then you, you have to. But, right. um, but yeah, I mean, it has saved us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You just throw up all the windows, right. you get the fresh air, you get the shade from the tree, mm -hmm. and we've saved a ton of money. Right. So I do, I know that it works. Right, and we've had a few groups of students who have come to the park, students that have participated in tree plantings, um, specifically the Neighborhood Art House and John Horan um, Community Center. And there were times when we were working at the amphitheater and then times when we'd walk over to one of the pathways. And I said to the students, do you feel that difference? Like the difference is incredible because of the shade of the trees. Mm -hmm. And that just like immediately, you know, that comparison of being so hot over in the amphitheater and they're ready to leave and then walking over to the pathways mm -hmm. and where the trees are providing shade and the air is so much cooler and comfortable. And, you know, just feeling that dramatic change, I think is makes a great impact. Yeah, did any of those students, um, was this their first time planting a tree where they were learning this experience oh, for yes. the first time? Yes, we had a lot of children like that. and. Unfortunately, we weren't able to engage with as many students. Um, if students came to plantings, it was with their family on the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I mean, some of them didn't even realize that they were trees. And then looking back, once the trees have grown and they see the leaves and it's just, they're like, oh, I wanna come back and water the trees. I wanna continue to see the growth of the tree. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, really inspiring to see their excitement of you know, something that they'd never experienced before yeah. you know, all of a sudden. And, and so now they have a connection to nature and they want to continue to take care of it. Right. And Relief has been able to accomplish so much with a part-time staff of three. Right. How do you guys do that? <laughs> <laughs> so there are a lot of people that help us do that. Um, first, you know, I want to recognize our board. Um, it's a volunteer board. We have specific members of the board, um, including John Vanko, who has taken on ro the role of project manager for the Relief Project. Um, we have three other board members who are part of the Relief team. We meet um, every week. Um, in addition to that, we have community members, so city arborist and sustainability coordinator Sarah Peelman is a member of our relief team. Um, Doreen Petrie, who is a part of the Farm to Table initiative in the Erie City School District is a part of our team. Um, sister Pat Lupo, a Benedictine sister, has been an integral part. And then our next interviewee, Ken Propneck, <laughs> who's just been the most incredible volunteer. I can't say it enough. He's the tree man mm -hmm. and just has, you know, his passion for this project is truly amazing. And we couldn't have done it without people like that who have just volunteered to be a part of it and have really taken it on with us to see it through so rosa thank you so much for being here i hope everybody at home watching i hope they feel your passion because i i do and i'm i'm really excited for this project moving thank forward you so much. and you gave us a great introduction to ken who we're going to have on the show with us here yes. next thank you so much well rosa just gave us a great introduction to relief volunteer ken fromnack Ken, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. I know that you would rather be in the field planting right now, um, but I will let our viewers know it's raining outside, so you are stuck with us here to talk about trees, something you are super passionate about. So, Ken, how did you become involved in the relief effort? A couple friends of mine uh, mentioned that they're doing a project with 
planting trees through an organization. So I called Sarah Pellman up and she directed me to talk to Vern Peterson. So I had, Vern has been over at the house a few times and saw and he has walked through my yard. So I, uh, I was talking to Vern and he uh, invited me to come and help with the relief program or the leaf program, whatever it's referred to, the tree program. So that's how I got involved and uh, it's just been a godsend ever since. I, I'm in my happy place. Yes, and Vern is the executive director of the LEAF program, Lake Erie Arboretum at Frontier Park. Ken, where did your love of trees begin? Because for as long as I have known you, which has been a long time, I've known Ken for, gosh, eight, nine years now, yes. you have been so passionate about trees and recycling. Um, I will mention Ken is also on the Mill Creek Township Recycling Committee, but where did your love of trees begin? Well, you're going to have to go back and get your history books because uh, back when I was about five, and I'm I'm not a 20-year-old anymore, but uh, my father used to talk about the American chestnut or chestnuts in general, and we have uh, we had a neighbor to the east of us. Uh, the, there were the Mallories, and they, the house is still standing on the. Uh, southwest corner of Avon Drive and Peach Street in Mill Creek, and they still have uh, a couple of Chinese chestnut trees at it. And uh, every October, the Mallory's would invite my dad to come over, because my dad remembered when he was a child, and he would always tell us about uh, at the supper table when he was 15, 16 years old, uh, riding his bicycle out from little Germany uh, which I don't think too many people know where that's at. It's around 28th and French. Uh, he'd ride his bike out with his friends, and uh, he was telling us one summer, uh, one summer, late summer, they went out and the trees, the chestnut trees were dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother had a piece of property uh, out in Union City, the property that my dad went to, was out along Peach Street, which was owned by my, I guess she was my great aunt. Uh, and it was all along the east side of Peach Street. I think she had over 250 acres or something. Uh, and my mother's uh, chestnut trees, uh, when she was going out to her property in Union City, uh, they were dead too. and. Uh, I was about seven or eight years old at the time when my dad would talk about them, and I, I started thinking, how could a, how could these trees die? Because, you know, uh, I played baseball, played football, played basketball. I didn't have any any thoughts about trees, and it was just kind of intriguing to know that uh, this these kind of trees died. And I started uh, checking into them, or started reading about them, and there was a disease that went through that was introduced in uh, New York Harbor in 1906 or thereabouts called Endorthia parasitica, which was a fungal disease which affected the American chestnut. And right around when my dad was 15, that would have been about 19, 20, 22, 23, and when my mom was about eight or nine, that was about the same time. So it was kind of intriguing to know that the disease must have spread from New York City all the way westward, westward and the American chestnut's range is only uh, basically in uh, central, central Pennsylvania, so many of the trees that it was affecting were being planted outside its range, and it was causing it to spread all the way to the west, and apparently there are very few trees left, but they still persist because uh, the, tr the disease only affects the above ground part of the tree and uh, suckers start to grow. So this is how I got my interest. And then when I started becoming a paper boy, I would always walk, go around peddling papers and just wondering what kind of trees that these were that I was walking under. And we had walnut trees and oak trees. We had a huge cucumber tree, which is a tree it's a magnolia. It's uh, located uh, 
Oh, I guess uh, right next to the Erie Bank there along Zermerly Road. I used to peddle the paper there to the Humphreys. I'm going way back mm -hmm. to the 50s now. Uh, and I used to wonder what kind of a tree that was. And, and now it's in my, uh, my tree book that I have that Sarah Pellman and I have worked on for the last, I started in 1982 or something, 83, because uh, an eerie writer, an eerie nature writer for the Times News, which who was Jimmy, Jim Beach, uh, a very neat name to have for very trees. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted me to see if, because I talked to him uh, uh, and I discussed, uh, the, he was talking about big trees in a nature article one time, and I just happened to call him and tell him I know where a couple big trees are. So he asked me to make a list, and that was kind of my predecessor. The list that I gave him was the predecessor to the Erie County Big Tree Book that we have come up with with Sarah Pellman and, Pellman and I. So that's where I basically got my start. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, most of the knowledge that I have about trees has been probably a hit and miss or trial and error because I used to plant trees all the time and they would die and I would wonder what happened to them. And uh, a lot of times you plant trees. Uh, when I do give away little seedlings, I have a little uh, instruction sheet and one of the things is uh, planting the tree in a particular area that has a circle around it. And the circle around it is not supposed to have any uh, vegetation. Uh, put some mulch there. And uh, I was not doing this. And it, the trees were dying because they were getting, uh, the moisture was getting sucked out of the ground too, too quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of the biggest things about how to, having trees planted. And also they make uh, the, your yard look very aesthetic. It makes it look like a golf course or a very uh, pristine landscaped area when you have a particular area around your tree. And it also keeps Mr. Lawnmower Cutter, M Mr. Grass Cutter away from him with a weed whacker and the lawnmower. And uh, those are the things that do a lot of damage to trees. Yeah, I think we should have an entire show on how to properly take care of, plant, and maintain trees. That's going to be a whole show in and of itself coming up now, just because you've you've inspired us here, Ken. We only have just a couple of seconds left, or a few minutes left, actually. But um, just share your favorite experience planting with relief, and why somebody should also join this effort. Well, every every Saturday, I think uh, during the uh, spring uh, spring uh, weeks, uh, we were doing something something different at different schools. And every time we get done doing one particular school, I just couldn't wait till next Saturday to get going again and doing the next school that we were going to be planning at. I, I so this is love an addicting trees. hobby. I love trees and I and it just uh, I've been always for the last 55 60 years uh, it's just been something that I go to something that I want to teach people about some you know just get little just get young children involved with doing it and maybe they'll have the same same passion that I had when I first started when my dad talked about them uh, back in the 50s yeah so. Ken, I totally, totally agree. Getting children involved is definitely the way to make them passionate about trees, planting trees, and you know, and then it filters up through the parents and through the adults. So, Ken, I want to thank you for being on the show today with us and sharing your expertise and your passion. And I know that we want to have you back on the show because there is so much knowledge into tree species and caring for trees that you can share with us. So I want to thank you for your time today, thank Ken. You. Thank you for having me. Viewers, I want to thank you for tuning into today's show. Um, it has been really inspiring to see what the Relief Project has done, planting 4,000 trees um, in the last couple of years and aiming in just the next couple of months to do another 5,000 trees. That's incredible for our community and for our environment. So I really encourage you to get involved in this effort. Again, thank you for tuning into the Mill Creek Government Channel. And until next time, have a great day.